I've seen and experienced a lot over the last seven decades in my career. I've met many interesting people, performed over 25,000 shows, and yes, even tuned in on the thoughts in the minds of over one million. But then, who's counting? Now, I'm telling you what really happened. Welcome to Kreskin's Amazing Experiences. This is Kreskin. You know me as the amazing Kreskin, and I'm sharing with you some of my amazing experiences. But I'm going to go back in my life. I think this will intrigue you and fascinate many of you who are students. will find that you'll want to do more research on this. But I'm going to go back to 1938. Yes, I was still already here. There are many who are theorized that I was born in 1928, but uh, I was four or five years old and at that time, and uh, an incident was happening that has been referred to as one of the most traumatic in broadcast history, and that is based on a radio series that Orson Welles was doing. Now, there is some further significance to my telling you about this incident because I propose at the end of my commentary to make a prediction about our future and how it will change thanks to the broadcast industry and what's happening around the world at this time. But radio was at its highest peak at that time, and people, when they uh, could not afford things, they didn't go out all the time because there was uh, uh, financial problems at those days, and uh, they would often sit in a living room with their family, and as a group, listen to the radio. That brings us to Orson Welles, one of the great actors of all time, who a few years later made a, an Academy Award movie called Citizen Kane. But when he did this radio show, as he recounted to me on a number of occasions, he said, Kreskin, I had no idea of the ramifications and the impact of what I was about to do and what I finally fulfilled in the way I wanted to do it because he did it in a manner that was incredibly brilliant. You see, it's a very, very famous fictional story about uh, the invasion from outer space of enemy aliens and what have you and disturbing our lifestyle. So on Sunday night, that was the story. And it was Orson Welles whose voice you heard. But something he did not foresee, it never dawned on him. And that is the massive panic that he created in the United States. And very often when this is discussed, the full details are not quite revealed. How can a fictional story, and you know it's fiction because it starts as a sponsor, what have you, how can it panic people when people know better? Well, they didn't know better. They didn't know better because of a number of unexpected factors that took place. Orson Welles' series was not the major popular show at that time. The major show at 8 o'clock at night was a man whose name was Edgar Bergen. And Edgar Bergen was one of the great ventriloquists of all time. He had two fabulous characters, Charlie McCarthy, whom if you were a kid, you'll remember seeing in stories because it seemed like Charlie McCarthy was almost real. And then another character who spoke in a very strange voice, and that was Mortimer Snurd. And those were the ones that everybody was listening to, except this evening. And Edgar Bergen never dreamt this was happening, and Orson Welles could not figure out what happened until the government investigated the panic that flooded this country. You see, every Sunday night, 
Edgar Bergen had a guest on the show. Usually it was someone from the movies because he was one of the most popular people in broadcasting and he was in movies as well. This particular evening, he had an opera singer on as a guest. And yes, he begun to read my thoughts. When people heard that an opera singer, a very famous one, was guesting on the show that evening, not everybody was into opera. And what did they do? They simply went over to the radio, whether it was six kids and parents and what have you, or a group of friends sitting around, and they turned it to another station. And turning it to another station, some of them stopped at a station that was playing the the actual fictional version of War of the Worlds. Now, that was not the popular show at that time, the, 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 a fictional show, but the people had turned it on after the program was introduced, after the host introduced the program, after any re- reference to, to commercials was brought up. And consequently, what did they hear? They heard the brilliance of Orson Welles because he thought to himself, hey, if I'm going to work this and the people are tuning it in, I want them to realize that the, how dramatic this is and how they can fill into it so forth. So what did he do? He had someone narrating some commentary and suddenly interrupting with a bulletin in New Jersey. This, this Something happened. And they pinpointed a place in New Jersey where it was taking place. And then another interruption came later on. And yes, there's another landing taking place. And they named an actual location in New Jersey, which everybody knew about. And they heard that this was happening. So without the beginning of the show, without the clarity that you were listening to a play and what have you, you now heard a program that was done like a news broadcast, which is the genius of Orson Welles, and it is what made it so incredibly successful. Oh, by the way, what made it all the more fascinating and all the more realistic is that you didn't have breaks very often for commercials and what have you, and some people got so excited they ran outside and, and call their friends, and people gathered together and said, do you know what's going on? Turn on, and they named the station, and people turned it on. And you heard a program being interrupted by an apparent news broadcaster and then going back to describing what is taking place. So you see, because of the lack of continuity to when something began and when it was taking place, we became fascinatingly a victim of the unexpected. And oh yes, how real was this? My dad was getting a haircut that night in Caldwell, New Jersey, on Roseland Avenue, very popular with the Italian people. My grandparents lived there. But my dad knew the barber, and they socialized a great deal. So what did they do? They said, uh, my father said to the barber, can I come over at such and such a time? He said, sure, sure, George, I'm, I'm, I'm alone. I have no clients then. You come in and we'll talk about things and I'll, and I'll give you a haircut. And there they sat. The radio had been just turned on. And as my father said to me, I couldn't imagine how real, but this seemed so real, And then he said, I turned because I was the only one there with my close friend, the barber. He turned my seat and said, look, George, you want to know what's really happening? And he looked out the window and it was dusk and there were cars running down Roseland Avenue. Cars, some with mattresses on them, some with all kinds of strange equipment and what have you. And that's what my father and the barber saw. People escaping from their homes in Caldwell, New Jersey to try to get away from the terrorism 
that has just begun. Now I have to tell you something. I have a prediction to make. Not that we're going to be be sent with the war of the worlds. I hope not, because the government changed how a radio show could be done uh, in order to protect people and what have you. But we found during the uh, pandemic, when so much was closed down, that people were not gathering together as much anymore. They were doing things privately. And this opens the door for the next great success of radio, the second generation of radio to about to be prepared to take place because people learned to adjust and feel comfortable when they were by themselves or with just a few people. It gave them a chance to reflect and people found it more and more comforting to do that. Not that I'm criticizing in any way, shape, or form television, but television is going to start to die because TV can't really be that realistic when you're watching it on a screen. Radio can be because you can become so involved in radio that you can forget where you are. And people are doing this by listening to books. They're buying recorded copies of books and listening to them. And the stories that come back are, my God, I found myself enveloped in this whole scenario. It became so real. You couldn't do that if they were doing it with a TV show because you would see equipment where scenes would change and what have you. But the great thing about listening to radio and a story dramatized on radio is that it brings in a second force, your imagination. And even a television station cannot replace your imagination. I can't predict when this will start to happen, but it's not before long.